great feast of the Nativity, the birth of the Most Holy Virgin, Mary, the Theotokos, Mother of God. As we reflect upon these events today, I'd like to begin just by reading a little description from the prologue of what we are commemorating as we reflect on this. The Holy Virgin Mary was born of aged parents, Joachim and Anna. Her father was from the lineage of David, and her mother from the lineage of Aaron. And thus she was of royal birth by her father and priestly birth of her mother. In this she foreshadowed him who was to be born of her as king and high priest. Her parents were quite old and had no children. Because of this they were ashamed before men and humbled before God. In their humility they prayed to God with tears to bring them joy in their old age by giving them a child as he had once given joy to the aged Abraham and his wife Sarah by giving them Isaac. The Almighty and all-seeing God rewarded them with a joy that surpassed all their expectations and all their most beautiful dreams, for He gave them not just a daughter, but the mother of God. He illumined them not only with temporal joy, but with eternal joy as well. God gave them just one daughter, but she would later give, she would later give them just one grandson. But what a daughter and what a grandson, Mary full of grace, blessed among women, the temple of the Holy Spirit, the altar of the living God, the table of the heavenly bread, the ark of God's holiness, the tree of the sweetest fruit, the glory of the race of mankind, and the praise of womanhood, the fount of virginity and purity. This was the daughter given by God to Joachim and Anna. She was born in Nazareth, and at the age of three was taken to the temple in Jerusalem. In her young womanhood, she returned again to Nazareth, and shortly thereafter heard the Annunciation Holy Archangel Gabriel concerning the birth of the Son of God, the Savior of the world, from her most pure and virgin womb. But if we could just place ourselves, brothers and sisters, in Nazareth a little bit today, and to think of what kinds of times they were living in. We reflected on this a little bit last night for those who were here, but it wasn't exactly peaceful and prosperous times, was it? Occupied by a Roman authority, foreign godless rulers, the local Tetrarch, the local ruler Herod, Herod the Great, as he's sometimes called, but not in the church. He was uh, not not so great of a guy. There were various movements of civil unrest, yet we have no indication that Saints Joseph and Anna got caught up in all of this. They didn't get discouraged. The, the, the Pharisees and the scribes, the leaders of the time, outwardly sought to live a righteous life, didn't they? But we know more often it was all for show. There was not that deep inner life. So you could say that perhaps they weren't, they weren't the outstanding lights and leaders among them either. And yet here they were, faithful to God, living a quiet life with patience and trust in Him. They weren't trying to change the world around them. They were trying to be faithful to the Lord day by day. And for years upon years, think of it, their faithfulness did not seem to be rewarded with any external display of God's blessing or mercy. Nothing. At that time, there was no greater blessing for a married couple than to have, have a child or many children. And they, being so dedicated to the Lord, had it none. And so this, if anything, is such an example for us of encouragement in times of struggle. To be patient, to, be perse to persevere, to know that God sees our hearts, our struggles, and our prayers. That we don't have to go outside to try to change something external, but to repent in ourselves. To live that quiet and humble life, seeking the Lord. What it must have been like for them how they sang psalms together at home. What unity of mind and heart reigned in their house as they sought the Lord without, we like said last night too, without the noise and distractions of all the electronics and, and, and constant information 
that we have. But they quietly, they trusted God. They remained faithful to Him. And what a blessing came from that. The fruit in due season, and the greatest of, of the fruit that could possibly be, the joy of the human race, the Holy Virgin Mary, the one who could become worthy through her humility, obedience, patience, love, and faithfulness to bear God the Word. And so we give thanks to God for all of these wonderful things on this great and joyous feast. And we take courage in that. And even in times when, as we are now outside the pavilion with high winds, nonetheless, here we are gathered around the holy table celebrating the Lord's Supper. And what a joy that, that is. So God bless you all in this great and glorious feast. And to Him be glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and to ages of ages.